So Marco Polo, after a year and a half hiatus from my Netflix queue, has finally come back with season two. Now, season two actually was released back in the beginning of July. It is the end of July, but I do not, I'm not able to just sit down and watch a show for 10 hours straight. It takes me a little bit of time. I do have another job. So <laughs> I'm going to give you guys a review of season two. And actually, Brennan watched a little bit of this. So this will be one of I the did. first times Brennan's actually able to chime in on a review. You know, I think the last side was probably the last side we reviewed season one of Marco Polo. Marco Polo. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, I believe you're right. I believe you're right. So just to give you a brief synopsis, we left off Marco Polo season one. They had Kublai had finally taken down the Song Dynasty and united all of China. And this was a big moment. Lots of trials and tribulations went into getting that done. And Marco Polo, everybody's favorite Latin that was left as a like a present for the Khan when his father was traveling through there, did his part to help and endeared himself to Kublai. So we start season two off after they have already just taken over the Song Dynasty. Everything's going in the right direction and what happens one of Kublai's main generals actually his cousin decides I think Kublai is going a little bit too far from our nomadic roots he's doing a little bit too much I think I should be Conicons and he pretty much says I'm going to challenge you to pretty much a vote and uh, this sets up pretty much the whole season uh, there's going to be a vote for who is going to be Khan of Khans and it's between Kublai and his cousin and, and as they, yeah, and as they point out, though, that this is done under the Mongolian law mm-hmm. and he has yeah. the right to do it. He's there was, got the right to challenge. As opposed to in the last season, the brother. Where his brother just him. wanted to war. Yeah. yeah. And, but he challenged him in a way that was not appropriate under Mongolian mm-hmm. stuff. So there's a little bit of a Kublai's not allowed to get angry about this call to vote, really. Mm-hmm. But, but we'll see. Or, yeah, oh, he, he still got angry. He still yeah. got really angry. And so let's break it down. Plot, just told you what the plot was pretty much. And I'll be honest, the plot, it seemed like for season two, was a lot more engaging than it was in season one, in my opinion. Uh, when they first came out with Game of Thrones back before season one, they dubbed it as the Asian Game of Thrones. Didn't quite get that feeling in season one as much as I did in season two. There's a lot more intrigue. There's a lot more backstabbing. There's a lot more twists and turns, it feels like, in season two than there was in season one. So... Plot. I, I think the plot improved from season one to season two, and it, that's what the way TV shows should go. Season two, season three, season four, depends on how many seasons you have, should really be the meat and potatoes of your show, and it seems like they're setting it up pretty well to do that. So I enjoyed the plot thoroughly. How about you, Brendan? Uh, what I've seen so far, and I have not finished it, but I watched a few <laughs> episodes, it is interesting. They, they set it up at the very, very end of the last season what the the main force was going to be yeah um here and they're they're pulling through it in a way i didn't it, that's very intriguing the the way it's yeah, essentially things are being manipulated but i also mm-hmm. did like the way the the role that marco polo has um moved into because i think now it actually makes a little bit more sense well you know what's funny is like marco he's polo, doing the guy who plays marco polo and marco polo as the character was probably my least favorite character of, of season one. Mm-hmm. I mean, not 100%, but he was one of them. I, I just didn't like him very much. Yeah, he, he wasn't as interesting. He wasn't, that and he wasn't necessary as as much. Like, he was just as much, like, yeah. he, he was just kind of our really lens. Important things, he, he, he was he our lens, all that. is what he, yeah. he served before. It's like, he was this foreigner in this foreign land, and he, things and needed he did to be do some, to. He did some pretty important things in season one, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. But it seems like season two, what they've done is they're like, okay, People don't like Marco Polo as much. We can't get him out of the show because he's the show is called Marco Polo. But it seems like they pushed him back a little bit. Yeah, he he does become more and more in the forefront towards the end of the season. But in the beginning of the season, they start showing some of the other stories a little bit more than they had in, in the previous season. In the previous season was pretty much uh, Kublai Khan and Marco Polo on one side. And you had Jing Tao, I believe his name was, was the chancellor of the Song Dynasty on the other side. And that was, that was about it. Now they're introducing multiple different groups. Uh, there's there's many moving pieces going around, and it, it really it feels more Game of Thronesian than season one did, and I really have enjoyed it. it some it lets some of the other characters, which there are some spectacular actors, uh, you know, in there that just so many good performances are coming out of this season, and so it, it just made me feel good to see it kind of move around a little bit more than just be focused on just one guy. Now, don't get me wrong, he is still the central focus of the show, mm. but 
it, it, it spreads it out a little bit more. And I, I really enjoyed that. Seeing the story from multiple different angles, multiple different points of view going into it. And so that, that really, I, I enjoyed that. I did feel, though, that his, his role just seemed more natural because now you understand yeah. why he, he's the one being sent to do whatever it is that he's doing as opposed to someone mm-hmm. else. Um, you know, early on, he sent out on a mission. And why don't you send one of your other elite people on this dangerous mission? One, well, it's kind of dangerous. And two, because everyone else is preparing for something that's more of a family matter and he's not part of the family. So, okay, you, yeah. you send him off. <laughs> so that, and that yeah. makes sense. And he's also the one that the Khan trusts to describe things. And since this was into other territories, well, you send the guy that's fed. Well, also, you, you send the stuff. guy that doesn't look like everybody else. You, you send the guy, the Latin, who's totally different from everybody else who's running through those parts and less suspicion is put on him as being an agent of the Khan rather than you know, just a traveling merchant, so. Well, possibly. I mean, he reveals who he is, but but he's definitely more comfortable in his role, and the way that they treat him, like, reasons for him to be in certain discussions make sense because he was the one that can describe things, but he's still not necessarily even uh, early on given. It's not like he's influencing the Khan's decision-making in a huge way like his other. Yeah, but not the same level as the other advisors. They put him in his place, but he is logically at the table because he's the one that knows information to to And if they just listened to Marco a little bit more in season two, things would have gone a lot different, but that's neither here nor there. I'm not going to spoil anything. Um, So overall... I enjoyed season two better than season one. I And I really enjoyed season one. I was actually very upset when they're like, oh, we're going to make you wait another seven months before you get season two. Not just a year, a year and seven months. So, you know, thanks, Netflix. But you came back with quality. That's all I, I can ask for. Yeah. And I would say um, as well, I mean, you've seen more, so maybe you can, can talk to this. But it seemed like they put in less fluff, too. Yeah, to support no, it, especially. Well, no, they, 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 have, they, have, they have, you know, not as much fluff. But yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm saying there, there, there can be a little There's a lot of gratuity fluff. in season one. I get what you're saying. And, and But, like, they, things that, like, didn't... Well, they also put in a whole bunch of scenes that the, that for that season didn't really necessarily you, add, you add anything. Just it, was just, it, yeah. it was just, like, to introduce a character or to introduce well, a concept of a different thing, plan. But here's the thing. A lot of those, those, those things that they... T- or side stories. Uh, yeah. Some of those little side stories that they show you in season one that didn't quite make sense, make more sense in season two. Okay, so, so, so they start fleshing it out. Yeah, yeah. they start they start fleshing everything out. And it really, you're, like I said, you're getting into the meat and potatoes of this story. And it, it really, really is entertaining. So overall, I'm actually, I believe season one, I gave like a three and a half or four. I'm going to give season two a four and a half out of five. So nice. up the grade. Better nice. show, season two is better than season one. Don't watch season two without watching season one. Don't get me wrong. I mean, it's not like you couldn't figure it out. And go you ahead and, and and watch Hundred Eyes. I don't think it relates in. Oh but yeah, it's, the Hundred Eyes nice. thing. That's a good, really cool segment. It's it only half really, an hour and, or so. And if you don't watch, and it does play a little bit into season two. They they, they flesh out a little bit more of uh, Hundred Eyes origins in season two. Well, and, they talk and, about him. I, I yeah. at least in the first couple episodes that I've seen, like he, they indicate he's going to be a bigger character. He's still giving his sagely advice and yeah, indicating which, things. So. So if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It's a Netflix show, so Netflix just does awesome things. Check it out. They do not disappoint with this. Hopefully season three will not be another year and a half away. But if it is, as long as they come back with the quality they did this one, I won't be that upset. So They do uh, Brendan... also change your emotions about certain certain big characters too, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Jurassic. So they do play with you. So if you want to be stuck in who you like and who you don't like. Get ready. This is Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I really like Kublai Khan in the first season. Yeah, I already got to the so point where I'm like, first... oh, man. Oh, nope, don't like you so much anymore, buddy. <laughs> so, so, yeah. Yeah, so go ahead and check it out. It's really entertaining. But hit us up. Let us know what you think about it. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Do you think it should be higher rated, lower rated? Just let me know. Hit me up. Just tell me your thoughts on Marco Polo. And, uh, and yeah, you can tell us about the thought. history of Marco Polo and how you feel about that. <laughs> yeah, and I want to say season one was more historically accurate than season two, but yeah, I don't really know that much about it. So, But yeah, so hit us up, let us know, comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, Google Plus Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's... <laughs>